Welcome to part two of my spear gun build. In this one we're going to cover making the barrel, the trigger mechanism housing and finally the roller assembly. In this part I made quite a few mistakes and honestly I thought I'd lose the gun a couple of times. So don't go anywhere and get comfortable. With the blank and the handle constructed the next logical step was to carve the barrel. But before I could do this, I needed to address a slight issue that I created for myself. The blank that I'd ended up creating was actually not long enough. The blank itself was around one meter long and with a 90 centimeter barrel, that gives me 10 centimeters of timber remaining, which is mostly gonna be used for the trigger mechanism housing. This leaves me little to no space to make a butt. So I needed to create an extension. So I ended up making another laminated section out of the offcuts that I discarded on my previous video. Of course this step would have been completely unnecessary if I actually had the right timber to start with. But the fact is, I bought this timber years ago with the intention of making a much smaller gun with it. And rather than get some more wood, I wanted to use what I had available. To make the extension, I did the exact same process that I did to make the original blank. Cutting the strips, alternating the grain and then gluing up. Once dried, it was then time to remove from the clamps, remove any excess glue and then square off before cutting. To join these two pieces of wood, I wanted to make a simple half lap joint, so I needed to square off both ends and remove sections of wood in order to make the joint. I used a table saw to try and keep things accurate. To try and speed things up, I ended up using the table saw to cut several slots into the wood. This would make things a lot easier and quicker to make the join. Once all the slots are cut, I use a chisel to remove the excess material and then clean up the mating surfaces before joining. Definitely not my prettiest joinery, but it'll do the job for this. I apply a generous amount of glue before clamping up and leaving overnight to dry. Rather frustratingly, I hadn't clamped this as good as I would have liked, and this ended up leaving me with a couple of gaps. It wasn't a massive issue though, as I'm going to be removing material from this section and filling any gaps that I find on the way. The next step is to completely square off the blank again before cutting the barrel. Because the blank will have been aging for a number of weeks, the wood will have likely changed position slightly, so it needs to be re-squared. For this, I opted for my CNC machine, as it should give me the most accurate results. The best machine for this job is probably a thickness planer, but as I didn't have one of those, this is my best choice. The only drawback of using a CNC machine like this is that the blank was too long for the machine, so I had to do the cutting in sections. But despite this, I had pretty good results overall, so it was much better than using hand tools. Once everything's nice and flat, it's now time to carve the track. To carve the track, you're gonna need a ball nose end mill. This cutter is seven millimeters in diameter, exactly the same diameter as the spear I'm using. Carving the track is arguably the most important part of building the gun. If you get this wrong, the gun's not gonna fire straight. And what did I do? I fucked it up, didn't I? This was all done off camera, but this is what it sort of looked like. 
and it was completely unusable at this point. Luckily I had one final option and this was to use a dovetail cutter to cut a much larger slot to then create an epoxy poured track. For this I'm using West System Epoxy which is very high quality. It's also the same stuff that I've used to laminate a teak blank in the past so I know that this stuff works. The ratio for this stuff is five parts epoxy to one part of hardener. Once combined, I give it a really good mix up and then leave it for a little while just so that the bubbles can come out. Next, I added some colored mica powders just to give the epoxy a nice color. So I was thinking of a sort of cosmic theme for this one, basically black with a lot of blue and purple sparkly tints to it. Now that the mixture is ready, it's time to pour the track. A steady hand was required for this pit, as I didn't want to pour any epoxy outside of the track. When pouring the track, you want to overfill it slightly. This is to account for the shrinkage once the epoxy starts to harden, as what you don't want is for the track to harden below flush to the rest of the blank as you'll have to remove a lot more material than is necessary. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this effect. It definitely looks like space. Once the track was poured, I then left it for 24 hours to dry at room temperature. Once dry, I used a hand plane to remove the excess epoxy and then make sure that the top face of the blank is nice and flat. Now it's time for my second attempt of carving the barrel. This time opting for a router instead of the CNC machine. I set the cutting depth to around half the diameter of the spear, which was around three and a half millimeters. With the track all done, accepting a spear and moving freely. Next, I moved on to carving the recess for the trigger mechanism. First, I mark the start point of the barrel, which in this case would have been 90 centimeters. Then, I start to mark out the trigger mechanism recess using the existing trigger mechanism, trying to align the center of the barrel and the trigger mechanism as best as I can. Once happy with my marking out, it was then time to set up the router to cut it. Again, using the trigger mechanism to set the required depth to cut. I really tried to take my time on this part, but annoyingly, I ended up making another mistake. I ended up overshooting the line and cutting into the barrel, which was not ideal. I probably only removed about 10 mil of material, so it wasn't like I'd destroyed the barrel. So I decided to cut away the remnants of the track and make it level once again. Fuck up slightly rectified, I continued to cut the remainder of the pocket. So far so good. Next I decide to cut the hole for the trigger. Once that was done, I then moved on to carving out the recesses for the front and rear mounting points.
The last element of this was to mark and cut the slot for the line release. When marking this one, you obviously need to make sure that the line release is fully forward. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the fit of this. Yeah, there's some gaps that could have been a bit narrower, but more importantly, the spear runs in the mechanism freely, there's no friction, and it's fairly central. Before moving on to the rollers, I wanted to just quickly remove some material from the stock to thin it down a little bit, make it about 40 millimeters in height. I don't recommend using a router for this, it took fucking ages. With the blank sufficiently thinned down, I then started to mark out the muzzle and then where I was going to position the rollers. No fancy titanium rollers, just a standard Durlin roller with a ceramic bearing was fine. I decided to cut the holes for the rollers using the drill press and some forstner bits, but in hindsight, probably would have got better result using a CNC machine or even a router as I had to cut three holes on each side and obviously lining those up is not as accurate. When cutting the holes for the rollers, you need to make sure that they're long enough to accept both the rollers and the bands. To do this, I made sure that they were twice the length of the rollers as a minimum. I used the router and chisels to clean up the holes afterwards, but the results were not my best. So I used the Dremel with a tungsten carbide burr to rectify the messy cutting. And with some TLC, I actually got some pretty okay results. Next was to mark the position of the rollers themselves, using the axis pin to hold everything together. Next was to drill the hole for the axis pin, and this one I also fucked up, though technically it wasn't my fault exactly. Because the drill bit wasn't long enough, I decided to drill the axis hole from both sides rather than going through in one complete pass. Annoyingly, the holes in the middle didn't align perfectly, and this was actually due to the device I was using not being completely flat, which I didn't know until after that. Here you can see just how off they are, and there's no way a pin's getting through that. Luckily, I thought of a pretty good way to fix this problem without changing the size of the axis pin. So the plan was first to drill a much bigger hole in one pass this time. The plan was to make some plastic spaces that would hold the axis pin in place and also ensure that the rollers are correctly spaced. So after a bit of measuring and some maths, I took to CAD software to design the spacers. So this is what I came up with. Overall, I was pretty happy with the design and confident it was going to work. Time to 3D print the components. The components were printed in PETG and it took less than an hour to complete. It took a couple of attempts to get the sizing right as the first few iterations were way too tight to fit on the access pins at all. It took me a number of attempts, but eventually I got it bang on. To my relief, they fit perfectly inside the blank, giving a lovely snapping sound as you push them in. Couple of taps with a hammer to get the access pin through, and that's the roller assembly complete. With 
with the roller assembly complete, that concludes the second part of my spear gun build. Next time, make sure you come back for part three, where I'm gonna be attaching the handle to the blank and doing all of the shaping to make this thing look like an actual spear gun. See you then.